Hey friends, welcome back to Hot News. It's time for your Friday edition. I will apologize, my nose is a little runny. I'm sure my face is a little red. Just, I have to, you know, it's, it's gonna be like that. So thank you for bearing with me. Today's episode of Hot News is brought to you by my Twitch channel. Yes, my friends, I stream over on Twitch as well as YouTube and it would mean so much if you guys could give me a follow over there. Maybe even consider giving me your Twitch Prime subscription since it's free for you if you already have Amazon Prime. You could just click all the links and you know, support UFD Tech and Hot News that way. Much appreciated. Anyways, let's jump into the first bit of news which we have for today. I'm gonna call a little bit of an audible today on the order of hot news and we're gonna put the title of the video first. I know a lot of you don't like it when I put it at the end, but today we're gonna we're gonna do the exact opposite because there's a lot to unpack regarding the next gen GPUs that are potentially coming out sometime soon. We've got a new leak from Adore TV, which is a big deal. We've got new information from Benchlife about what it's going to look like as far as the founder edition cards. And then we also have some official information for the US Patent and Trademarks Office regarding some of the naming schemes that Nvidia has already filed for. So sit back, relax, and get comfortable for hot news. How However you deal with warm weather by you know shedding you know layers or what I'm not gonna judge how you're watching this okay so first up we have a leak from bench life and they have some information on what the cooler design of the founders edition cards will be we're typically used to having blower style coolers with a single fan that blowed the air out the side of the card however it appears because these are gonna be such big hot chips for the upcoming next-gen GPU series that they are gonna put two fans on it and then it's gonna be an open air cooling design typical to what you see on, let's say, you know, a normal AIB partner card. Blower style cooler, spins here, blows out here. Then, you know, the obvious like normal ones that we know about. That's that's basically what we're to be expecting. Don't believe that what we put in the, the thumbnail is the real thing. It's just, it's a conceptual realization of what it could potentially be. Then the graphics card company Galax has actually released some information about the next gen GPUs in a statement to somebody who was asking questions at the China Joy conference a little while ago. So basically they said that players will be able to see the information about the new graphics cards in September. The performance will certainly have a breakthrough growth and will support the most advanced NVIDIA ray tracing technology. Game player is a good news. That, that, that's bad translation. Then we have official news on the naming scheme of the next gen cards. Nvidia has officially filed trademarks with the USPTO and registered things under Nvidia Turing, which will then just obviously be the next gen architecture like it's been rumored. And then they've also trademarked the names Quadro RTX and GeForce RTX. Now this next leak from Adore TV is something that I would take seriously because Jim is not known to just throw things around if it's not substantiated, although he does give leeway for the fact that this may or may not be true and he can't necessarily verify all of the information. And he's even suspect about some of the specs that he was quoted as far as what the next gen GPUs are supposed to do. However, a lot of what he revealed in his video makes sense in light of the USPTO registrations and everything that we're seeing come out with the leaks elsewhere. So we're gonna include his link in the video description and also right up there if you wanna watch Jim's original video, but I'm gonna to try to break it down as quick as possible for you all so that we can have an understanding of what's happening here. So essentially, NVIDIA is going to be breaking up their graphics card groups into two different distinct segments like a lot of us thought they would be. However, now it's gonna be broken up into RTX and GTX. RTX standing for ray tracing technology, whether that's tensor cores or something about the graphics cards that allow them to do hardware accelerated ray tracing, and then the normal GTX cards that we're all very familiar with. And the cards that will get the RTX nomenclature are the upcoming Titan, the 2080, and the 2070 graphics card. The ones that will retain the GTX nomenclature are the GTX 2060 and 2050. Now he has some information as far as the performance of these cards and what we can expect. So let's break it down. The Titan RTX will be 15% faster than the Titan V and 50% faster than the 1080 Ti and come in at a whopping price of $3,000. The RTX 2080 will be 8% faster than the 1080 Ti and 50% faster than the GTX 1080 and come in between five and 700 dollars I would suspect seven to 750. That's where I'm not necessarily sure of these leaks, but the Titan RTX and the RTX 2080 will be announced and unveiled this month in August. The next one, the RTX 2070, will be unveiled in September and come in 17% faster than the 1080, 40% faster than the 1070, and come in three to $500, again, probably on the higher end of that. Then in November, we could expect the mid to low end cards with the GTX 2060 and 2050 being unveiled with the 2060 being 7% slower than the 1070, 27% faster 
faster than the 1060 and costing two to three hundred dollars and then the 2050 being 18 percent slower than the 1060 but 50 percent faster than the 1050 ti coming in at 100 to 200 dollars now there's some suspect things such as the vram amounts that are shown in this with the 2080 getting eight gigabytes of gdr6 but then the 2070 has seven gigabytes and then the 2060 has five gigabytes it's not like Nvidia couldn't do this, but like I'm uncomfortable with odd numbers overall, so I'm not happy about this. And then the 2050 would be on GDDR5 instead of a GDDR6. That would make sense for more of a budget card because GDDR6 is more expensive, so I could understand Nvidia wanting to save money there. I'm just not necessarily sure that they would differentiate things that much by including different VRAM. They've done it with the 1080 and the 1070 where it's GDDR5X and GDDR5, so it's possible. I'm just not necessarily a huge fan of the idea. So this is a lot of leaks that have come out that we're having to compile all together. The time frame is making sense. SIGGRAPH is coming up on Monday, which we're expecting them to unveil the new Titan RTX cards, maybe potentially the RTX 2080 and 2070. However, that's not as likely considering Gamescom is coming the week after, although they could unveil it at SIGGRAPH with the new architecture unveiling and then just talk about it more at Gamescom with some hands on demos. Again, this is all rumored information at this point. It can't be 100% confirmed. However, I would trust a leak from Jim from Adore TV more so than I would from some random website out in the middle of nowhere. So the fact that he's considered worthwhile to publish this, I, I would take this with a, a lighter grain of salt than I would otherwise. Especially given the fact that like the USPTO confirmed part of this already, there's, there's a lot of good information that I think, even if it's not completely true, like the performance numbers or the pricing, it's gonna be moderately true as far as the RTX versus GTX division, because that actually makes just logical sense based on how hard Nvidia has been pushing ray tracing technology. So separating those brands between the cards that can and the cards that can't is a great marketing move that even Jim says likely is going to persuade people to not get a 2060 because they realize they won't have the RTX enabled hardware. And so they're gonna wait, save up, or even beg their parents for money to buy that RTX 2070 because it's gonna be a distinct difference between the two as far as what they're capable of. Jim also speculated that this is NVIDIA's way of forcing ray tracing into becoming a mainstream game technology because they're dedicating the hardware for it and creating this division. Otherwise, it could just be some feature that could fall to the wayside. But if they promote it by having specific classes of GPUs that are dedicated to it, it could be something that's big or it could fall to the wayside like physics and everybody's just be like, this should just be in a graphics card. Who knows how it's gonna play out. This seems like an NVIDIA marketing move uh, that makes, makes sense. Like I can't necessarily blame them for it, but it also is a little like, it, I could see people choosing to go with only the 2070 and up because it would have different hardware type features, not just better performance. That's a lot. Let's move on into the next article because I, yeah, I don't want to beat that dead horse. Again, if you want a bigger breakdown on it, please go watch Adore TV's 24 minute breakdown on all of this. He does a really great job of explaining it all. Now I'd like to talk about something that I'm probably just as excited for as the new graphics cards, and that's the upcoming Palm phone. So we have some leaked information from Android police on what the Palm codename Pepito is going to be like. So the Pepito is gonna be a 3.3 inch 720p phone that has an 800 milliamp hour battery, a Snapdragon 435 processor, three gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of storage, and basically just as a giant disappointment to everything that I wanted. And hopefully they would come out with a Pepito Senior that actually has flagship specs. This basically seems like I would be going back to my Palm Pixie and I like I, I wanted the Palm Pre. Like I want a pre-level phone for Palm, not this Palm Pepito thing. It also, like, basically, it looks like uh, iPhone 3G, but, like, modernized almost. And now let's talk about the best headline that I read of the day, and it is a Where's Waldo Finding Robot is here to steal your toddler's only job. Yes, toddler stealing robots are on their way. Toddler job stealing robots, may I correct myself? Basically, it uses a camera to identify stuff and just points where Waldo is. It's not great science, but it's something that is, like, best, best headline of the day, basically. Good job, Gizmodo. A bit of news that actually surprised me today. Monster Hunter World is the biggest game launch on Steam this year. Like, it surprised me because I'm not hyped for Monster Hunter World at all, but then, like, thinking back, there hasn't been that many good PC releases this year, so MHW being the one that's the biggest 
Kind of makes sense. Are you guys playing it? We have it because we're going to be benchmarking it, but apparently there's 240,000 concurrent players a few hours after launch with a lot, a lot of people playing this game. Something that I am hyped for though is Sony's 500 million celebration PlayStation 4 Pro coming in at two terabytes of storage, but then also is like this translucent blue that looks really nice and it has a light bar that just kind of illuminates it. I would love this very much. They're only gonna have 50,000 units available worldwide, but I can tell you that I, at the very least, I'm gonna try to get my hands on one because I want it. And when I say that, I'm gonna reconsider when I actually have to buy it because it's gonna be way too expensive here in South Africa. So this is this is my pipe dream. Then we have a video from Overlord showing how Denuvo DRM games can actually really slow down the performance of some of the biggest hits that have come out, such as Mass Effect Andromeda, where there's nearly a 10% difference in FPS versus the cracked version and the Denuvo DRM one. You guys can check out that video for the actual detailed breakdown and you can see how he performed his benchmarks and see if it's something that actually matters to you like the ethics of like buying a game but then downloading the cracked version yes no maybe so if you're looking at buying a new Apple device, you can actually use their buyback program called Apple Giveback, where they give you a store credit for actually sending in your device when purchasing a new one. However, the difficulty with that was always that you had to ship your device to them first before they would apply your credit to the purchase. However, that's no longer the case. They are going to be applying the purchase at the time of sale and then potentially charging you more or refunding you later, depending on whether the device is in the condition that you say it is. But it looks like this is a quick and easy way of you making making sure that you get the immediate discount off of the Apple products that you might wanna purchase, except for I know our demographics and not a whole lot of you care about this news. I know I've crapped a lot on Intel on this channel. However, one of the things that I actually really appreciated about their CPU launches was their mobile U-series update that they did with Coffee Lake Refresh, making sure that the i5 and i7 U-series processors came out with four cores and eight threads. Well, we have information now about their Whiskey Lake U14 nanometer processors that should be coming out soon. That includes the i3 8145U with two cores, four threads, and a boost clock of 3.9 gigahertz. And then there's the Core i5-8265U and Core i7-8565U, which both have clock speeds of 1.6 and 1.8 gigahertz respectively, but then boost up to mind-numbing speeds of 4.1 in the case of the i5 and 4.6 gigahertz in the case of the i7. I was super excited when these came out. I bought my wife a new laptop because she was finally gonna get four cores and eight threads, even on an i5U series, which is something that I think is like them moving things forward. They, I don't see them having another competitor in this space, but they're actually advancing it. So I was, I'm happy with Intel here. I'm glad to see that they're uh, increasing the clock speeds on the Whiskey Lake U series processors and Good job, Intel. No sarcasm there this time. I really appreciate this. And that's gonna wrap everything up for hot news today. Let me know what you thought of the RTX GTX situation, those toddler job stealing robots, or even the Palm Pepito. Let me know down in the comments what you think. I'm Brett with the UFD Deck channel. I hope you enjoy your weekend. I really do. And I'll see you guys on Monday for another episode of Hot News, which will actually come out after the SIGGRAPH live stream. So maybe no hot news that day and we'll just watch SIGGRAPH together. Let me know what you think. Uh, hot news, no hot news when the, the SIGGRAPH live stream is going on. No, no, I'll, I'll, I love you too.